Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I am back today with another Distress Oxide colour combination video and today we're going to be looking at the Evergreen Bow colour. It's absolutely stunning. So this is a kind of a cool green, kind of a teal, a dark teal and I think it's perfect for Christmas to team with reds and such. I'm going to be doing a couple of different colour combinations for you today, actually not including red so there's another one you can try. Uh, but as with all, all of the uh, Distress Oxide colour combination videos, we're going to look at this colour individually on its own. We're going to show you how it works alongside other colours that sit very closely around it. So if you're actually starting to build up your Distress Oxide stash, which ones you may already have that you think actually it's quite similar, I don't need that one right now. Um, and then a couple of combinations for you. So a three colour and a four colour combination that you can have a go at at home. So first of all, let's look at Evergreen Bow. Now I'm going to put this in the middle and this is just ready for my first combination. But look how creamy the oxides are, first of all, and the colour is stunning, absolutely beautiful. So like I say, it's like a dark teal, a minty, a dark minty green, really lovely. And I think you can team it with so many colours. You can go cool with it, but you can also go really warm with it with yellows and reds, as I say. Particularly if you want to be festive, um, I particularly like things like um, abandoned coral, festive berries with it. It's so nice. So there is your evergreen bow colour. Now just comparing it to the label, so you can see it's slightly more green than the label, but not far off, not far off at all. Let's just give my mat a wipe and I'm going to bring in a couple of other colours that are going to work, sit around this within the oxide range. Uh, the mat that I'm working on, the brushes that I'm using and of course all the Distress Oxides are all available linked below so you can find out where to get them both UK and US links. So this is Evergreen Bow and four colours I've chosen from my, my stash which is uh, all of the colours I've got now. Um, these are the ones that I think sit quite closely around Evergreen Bow. So if we just put them all there, you can see they all kind of fit it. So this is a slightly lighter shade, a darker shade, a more blue and a more green. But they're all similar. OK, so that kind of between blue and green, maybe sort of, uh, sort of around the teal, the mint sort of colours. So let's just pop these back where they were because I've put them in this order and I've swatched each of these, all four of these. So we've got Peacock Feathers, Salvage Patina, Cracked Pistachio and Lucky Clover. Now if I bring in to my swatch this colour, you can see with the Lucky Clover that is much more green, it's more of a grass green. With Cracked Pistachio, much much paler. With the uh, Salvage Patina you've got more of a blue colour and then with the peacock colours, way more blue. So definitely down the blue teal route rather than the green. So when you look at the labels, these are actually the four that I found were the closest. But when you swatch them, there really isn't anything that particularly sits all that closely with Evergreen Bow. In fact, one I didn't try, and I will just do that now, and that's Iced Spruce. And the reason being because this is a green still, just, but it's also got a touch of uh, grey in it, I feel. And I think it's going to sit quite well. I'll just put that into my colour combination swatch, but I can make a new one. See, that's still a green. It's much more grey. So there's another one. When you look at the, the them all together, actually, it doesn't sit that far off of ice spruce, not massively. So if you're looking at labels uh, or even your swatch book and you're trying to work out which one's going to sit the closest, I suppose I would say probably Lucky Clover is going to be the closest to that one, but I don't think there's anything truly like any of these within the Distress Oxide range. Um, so there's Evergreen Bow. Let's pop our similar colours aside. Let's just do another swatch for Evergreen Bow now. So the first colour combination I'm going to do with you is uh, completely tonal. So I'm going to keep within the same sort of green and go from light to dark. This is lovely if you want a background that isn't striking in that it detracts from the foreground, but it's got a nice ombre look. So Evergreen Bow I've got in the middle. I'm going to put Pine Needles on the outer edge. Now this is a much darker green. I'm going to put this here. You can see how dark it is. Again, similar in colour, I think, but definitely much, much darker. 
it could potentially actually have sat within that group of greens that I showed you at the beginning. Um, those ones that are similar, definitely. This one's definitely a juicier ink pad as well. But look at the beautiful color blends we've got there between the two. So pretty. Okay, so that is pine needles. And again, another one of my sort of favorites. I think any green that's uh, or a teal as well is definitely in my favorites box. And then we're going to come to the other end. We're going to go really much lighter with salvaged patina. And this is, you're getting towards the blues here with this one now, but I just think it works into evergreen bow really well. So let's layer this up. But again, being a paler color, just takes a little bit longer for that color to lay down nice and strong. So covering the white first, I'm going up to the green. I don't want to lose the green, so I'm going to go back in with what's left on the green brush here and just brush over that blend line, bring some of that green down into the salvage patina until I pretty much lose the green there. Beautiful. Isn't that just so pretty? So you have really gone from a blue through to a green, but passing through evergreen bow in the middle. And I think this is the great thing about this color. It is that, that kind of transition where you can put blue or green either side of this and work between the two. So it's the perfect teal. So there's one color combination for you. In fact, I'd actually be really tempted to fade this off into white. And that's something that I can do in a future video for you and show you how to fade your colors off into white, given that there isn't a distress oxide in picket fence in white, there's only an ink. Um, so I'll be able to show you how to easily do that. But let's keep evergreen bow to the side and let's now move on to another color combination and that's using our going into our warmer colors. So I'm going to put evergreen bow on one end and then we're going to go through green, yellow and then into orange with this one so again clean my mat and i always wipe, i always wipe my mat dry as well because i don't want my mat to um, have water on it because distress oxides are water reactive so if you have water on it you're going to get uh, that ink reacting you're going to get marks distress stains um all these different sort of i suppose discrepancies within your ink smooth your smooth blending that you possibly didn't want so evergreen bow first now this is exciting because we're already into the e's through our alphabet if you've not seen already we are working through the entire alphabet looking at each color just like this individually going from a all the way through to i would say z but there isn't any there's no distress oxide at the moment with a z so um we're going as far as we can through the 71 at the moment colors I'm hoping for a 72nd color and i believe the final and last color to be released before I finish the series. So you've got everything here for you, but I'll soon add it if not. So I've just put Evergreen Bow down there and that's going to go into peeled paint. Now I've said this before, but I will repeat myself in case you're just joining me for the first time. If I've got a group of colors that I like the look of together, but I'm not sure what order to put them in, so which to put next to which, I think about the rainbow. So within the rainbow, you've got red going into orange, into yellow and so on. So I, I would do the same here, although this is backwards. If you can imagine, you've got red and then you've got um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, orange, yellow, green, blue. So I would put them in the order that they are in, in the rainbow. So uh, I know that, for example, so red goes into orange because there is some red in orange. Then it goes into yellow because again, there's some uh, yellow in orange. Then it goes into green because there's some yellow in green uh, and then it goes into blue because blue and green just sit beautifully together. Uh, blue goes into purple, there's some blue. Do you get the idea? So if you think about the rainbow, you're going to know which colors to put which, next to which ones. When you've got a color combination, you've decided, yes, I like those three or four, even more colors together, um, but you're not sure which order to put them in. Just think about your rainbow. I find that's the best way. So those two, so that is peeled paint into evergreen bow. Now I have faded this off. So I do, I'm just going to put a bit more peeled paint down, darken that green a little. And then I'm also going to darken my evergreen bow because I feel like that could be a little more solid. I left a few white patches, which is just where I didn't quite lay, lay it down heavy enough. 
let's go over those lines again beautiful okay and I do often go back and blend with each of the brushes and keep blending like that until I'm happy with the the transition between the two okay so I don't want any green or blue into my yellow so clean my mat again and dry my mat like so take that water away then fossilized amber which is it is a yellow but it's a yellow that is it's nice warm yellow it's not a bright yellow it will still work nicely into green so then the peeled paint just works beautifully into there doesn't it hardly any work at all to blend those two and then into wild honey which is it is it's a yellow stroke orange it's a very bright orange it's not a dark yellow there we go see in fact it's extremely similar to fossilized amber when you see it down on the paper like that in fact looking at the four together look how different wild honey is I'm actually going to change my mind about this I'm going to bring in instead of wild honey then I'm going to bring in rusty hinge I'm going to take that up a notch to an even darker orange stroke brown let's remove this yellow and the beauty of oxides is that you can overlay the colors to a point that's much much better so so we've learned today and I actually hadn't realized how close fossilized amber and wild honey are together isn't that much better definitely better so we've got our four colors there really a blue evergreen bow is kind of a green but uh, a teal going into green going into yellow and then just going into the the brown the rust color the orange was going to be wild honey which looking at the label I thought that was going to be a good match but on paper it was so similar to fossilized amber that actually rusty hinge was better so there we go we'll take our wild honey out and we'll put those four instead so still a beautiful combination so there are two different color combinations for you there's a comparison as well with the other colors that sit closely around it but that is evergreen bow so a beautiful green teal green color that you can be using with lots of different themes lots of genres within your paper craft projects now don't forget of course if you like this video and you want to see more please do subscribe give me a thumbs up as well I'd love that leave me a comment let me know what you think about this color will it be one that you're adding to your stash and as I say I will be working through the entire alphabet all the distress oxides so uh, do make sure you check black back at that playlist regularly because one of these goes up every few days okay take care everybody and I'll see you again very soon